Greetings, my friend. Not only has Elon Musk challenged Putin to a one-handed fistfight for the future of Ukraine, he has also been providing much-needed internet service through his Starlink satellite system to Ukraine. But you know what they say, no good deed goes unpunished. So is Starlink facing a possible attack from Russia? And what does Elon have to say about this? Biden was addressing the Russian invasion of Ukraine in Warsaw, Poland this weekend and decided to go off script. One statement he made could lead to World War III. The CCP has decided to ban all of Keanu Reeves' movies, including my second favorite movie of all time, The Matrix, all because he decided to attend an event they didn't approve. Okay, my friends, let's take a closer look together. Welcome to Veracity. I'm your host, Michael Lewis. So good to be back, my friends. I really miss doing this every day. Please like and share. We need to grow our community. And most importantly, come join the membership site on Locos. The link will be down in the description below. Your membership will help liberate me from ever depending on YouTube to finance and grow this channel. There will be exclusive content only available for members, and it will be the home for all highly censored content. With the midterms coming, I have a strong feeling I'm going to have to post a lot of information to the membership site because we all know they will be censoring the truth. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the show. After Ukraine's elite drone unit managed to destroy Russian tanks with the help of Starlink, it seems Russia's top priority is to eliminate Starlink satellites before it can do more damage to Russia's army. In a recent interview, Elon Musk was asked about the possibility of Russia and or China taking out the Starlink satellite system through their anti-satellite missiles after finding out it was helping Ukraine in getting high-speed internet connections despite having no internet towers. However, with his bold nature, the richest man in the world is not afraid of anything when he said, it was interesting to view the Russia anti-satellite demonstration a few months ago in this conflict. Nevertheless, if you attempt to take out Starlink, this is not easy because there are 2,000 satellites in low Earth orbit. That means a lot of anti-satellite missiles. Although Musk has already warned the Starlink users in Ukraine to use its services only when needed, you will be surprised to know what he said next to the interviewer. I hope we do not have to put this to test, but I think we can launch satellites faster than they can launch anti-satellite missiles. This proves Russia's speculated plan to blow Starlink satellites could backfire on them if SpaceX decides to pump its engines. Moreover, as he also said that we cannot let Putin take over Ukraine. The Supreme Court is against the respected Navy SEALs. The controversial COVID-19 vaccine mandate has now found its way towards crushing the fundamental freedom of our strongest men and women. In a 6-3 vote in favor of making vaccines mandatory for the Navy SEALs, former President Trump appointed Justice Brett Kavanaugh said, Navy has an extraordinary compelling interest in maintaining strategic and operational control over the assignments and deployment of all social warfare personnel, including control over decisions about military readiness. The judge also referred to Article 2 of the Constitution and stated that President of the United States not any federal judge, is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. However, this ruling received a stark response from President George W. Bush's appointed Justice Samuel Alito, who voted against the ruling by stating, great injustice, and explained upon his dissenting opinion because of the unacceptable language used by the Biden administration in the application to the Supreme Court. Astonishingly, the language pressed upon the Navy to use their men's unvaccinated status as a reason for directing them to perform whatever duties or functions the Navy wants, including sitting alone in a room, pushing paper or reading manuals for the duration of the appellate process. According to the Biden administration, deploying an unvaccinated Navy threatens the success of the critical missions and endangers other service members' health. Nevertheless, what is more surprising is that the right to religious exemption filed by 26 Navy SEALs under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act has been openly rejected by Justice Kavanaugh with the statement that the Religious Freedom Restoration Act 
does not justify judicial intrusion into military affairs in this case. It is said that the words of the president in a public place matters a lot for the country because they can move markets, they can send our brave women and men into a war to bring peace, and they calm a nation in turmoil. Well, these words were said by none other than President Joe Biden in 2019. Take a look. You all know the words of a president matters. They can move markets. They can send our brave women and men to war. They can bring peace. They can calm a nation in turmoil. They can console and confront and comfort those who have faced tragedy. And they can inspire us literally to reach for the moon. As strong and promising it may seem, you will be astonished to know that recently, the same president said this during a speech at the Royal Castle in Warsaw, Poland. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. These few words may now have made it extremely difficult to end the Russian-Ukraine war through diplomatic channels because Russia and other countries, after hearing these words, soon started believing the U.S. is planning to overthrow President Putin from power. However, in order to ensure such words don't mislead or make the situation worse, the U.S. ambassador to NATO, Julian Smith, immediately ran up to news channels to clarify Biden's statement by saying that the U.S. does not have a policy of regime change towards Russia and contended Biden was speaking in the moment without elaborating. Later, the White House further clarified that Biden was pressing on the point that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region. And he was not discussing Putin's power in Russia or regime change. Nevertheless, despite the top leaders of the administration trying their best to make Russia forget what he said, these sharp words managed to find their way into Russia, which forced their Russian spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, to state that such personal insults narrow the window for bilateral relations. The Russians, for their part, dismissed President Biden as a weak, sick, and unhappy, with the president of the state recommending the, that he undergo a medical examination. This sentiment echoes what a Kremlin spokesman said that the Democrat suffers from irritability, fatigue, and forgetfulness, which eventually results in aggressive statements. The wave of these few words have also put French President Emmanuel Macron in a pinch, who seemed very disappointed with what Biden said while concluding the speech. Macron said, if peace needs to be achieved in this disastrous war, then extreme caution should be made concerning the words used by the country's leaders. When asked about his main objective, Macron said, we want to end this war only through diplomatic channels, without any unacceptable action and any escalated words. While in Ukraine, a leading Ukrainian negotiator has claimed that Kiev and Moscow will hold diplomatic talks this week in Turkey, which the Russian negotiator also confirmed. As the leaders of these countries are finding a way to end this war, we must never forget that around 1,081 civilians have already been killed in Ukraine. And around 3.8 million Ukrainian people have fled the country by watching their very own houses get destroyed in front of them. I really hope this war ends soon. Top Republicans were reportedly talking about the possibility of unseating President Joe Biden when they regained both chambers of Congress. I think that's definitely a discussion we have to have. Representative Jim Jordan told the Washington Times at the Republican retreat in Florida this week. Just look at the border. Jordan said about the more than 2 million migrants who have been apprehended at the southern border. The President of the United States is supposed to enforce the laws along the border, and they've not doing it. Republicans could prosecute Biden for many, many other considerations, too. Fentanyl has become the most common cause of death among 18 to 45-year-olds during Biden's first year as president. Inflation has touched a four-decade record. Gasoline prices have risen to an all-time peak. The supply chain management challenges have worsened. And the deadly withdrawal from Afghanistan will forever stain Biden's presidency. It's clear the president is not up to the job. That is, his entire administration is willing to thumb its nose at the Constitution, Gibbs tweeted. Though Pelosi's house will not hold POTUS accountable, 
it's incumbent upon House Republicans to call out his egregious violations of his oath of office. Apart from trying to impeach Biden, assuming Republicans regain authority of Congress well after the upcoming midterm elections, they will also be willing to investigate Hunter Biden's laptops, Joe Biden's connection to criminality in China and Ukraine, even Dr. Anthony Fauci's involvement in financing the Wuhan laboratory in China. Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz expects that the GOP may impeach Mr. Biden if they gain control of the legislature. Cruz said earlier this year on his podcast, Verdict with Ted Cruz, yeah, I do think there's a chance of that, whether it's justified or not. Democrats have a slight majority in Congress. Political observers believe that the GOP will grab sufficient votes to regain the majority as people turn away from the Biden administration's progressively left policies. On Saturday, Republican Representative Jeff Fortenberry of Nebraska announced his departure from the United States of House of Representatives. According to Associated Press, Fortenberry resigned as a consequence of California jury convicting him of lying to federal authorities about an illegal campaign donation he received from a foreign national. It has been my honor to serve you in the United States House of Representatives. Fortenberry said in a letter to his constituents, Due to the difficulties of my current circumstances, I can no longer effectively serve. FBI agents investigated Fortenberry about all his contributions at his residence in Lincoln, Nebraska, and in the presence of his attorneys in Washington, D.C. Prosecutors presented recordings during the trial of private phone conversations proving Fortenberry was constantly informed that the $30,000 donation to his campaign come from a Nigerian billionaire. Fortenberry said he told the FBI agents everything he knew. He said he was shocked when these charges came against him. I feel so personally betrayed, he said. We thought we were trying to help. Fortenberry was tried and convicted on three felony counts for lying to federal investigators. Each of the crime is punishable for up to five years of imprisonment. Felons are eligible to run for and serve inside the United States House of Representatives. After learning of illegal contributions to his campaign, the congressman repeatedly chose to conceal the violations of federal law to protect his job, his reputation, and his close associates. U.S. Attorney Tracy L. Wilkinson said in a statement Thursday, the lies in this case threatened the integrity of the American electoral system and were designed to prevent investigators from learning the true source of campaign funds. The CCP officially suspended Canadian actor Keanu Reeves for attending the ceremony commemorating Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama. From the Matrix series to John Wick, Keanu Reeves' movies have disappeared from practically all of China's streaming services. Reeves' claimed infraction was for attending a March 3rd online event sponsored by Tibet House, a nonprofit founded by the Dalai Lama. This is not the first time or the last time that a high-profile individual has been censored in China for some perceived act of disobedience in the eyes of the CCP. Brad Pitt didn't set foot in China for nearly 20 years after portraying an Austrian mountaineer in the film Seven Years in Tibet. And former NBA player Ennis Cantor Freedom's vocal criticism of the regime's suppression of Tibet last year triggered Tencent to scrap broadcasts of his team's games. The CCP also stopped Anastasia Lin, Miss Canada, from acquiring a visa to enter China and participate in the Miss World 2015 finals in the southern island province of Hanan because they can, she condemned the CCP for the persecution of Falun Gong, a peaceful spiritual movement that has been persecuted by the CCP since 1999 to this day. And that's it for today, my friends. Don't forget to like and share, and most importantly, Join our member site and support the mission to deliver truthful information. I rather depend on the generosity of you, people I can trust, than ever be dependent on YouTube again. So you all know what we have to do. Let's grab our mugs that matter and let's make a toast. Toast to our new partnership and toast to our friendship. Salute.